My, you are a mighty beautiful sight to see. As I stand here with you today, I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am to be here at New Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Amen and amen and amen. And we're not here to talk about me or talk about anything, and we're here to praise Jesus, talk about Jesus, and give glory to Jesus, amen and amen. So I challenge you this morning to get your Bibles and let's jump into things right. Let's get into the Word of God. We're going to be in 1 Kings chapter 18, and we're going to be reading verses 41 through 46. 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 through 46. And if you're able to stand, I'm going to ask you, to, if you would, let's stand in the honor of the reading of the Word of God today. We're going to read these passages of scriptures today. It says, starting off in the very first part, it says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and and said to his servants, Go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, (laughs) that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass that in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. and, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Let's pray together. Mighty Heavenly Father, Mighty God, I just rejoice in this moment, this new beginning that we are having here today. Father, we pray that you just take over and take this place and make it even more divinely yours. Father, we didn't come into this place to hear the words of men, but we came in to hear the leading of the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you are free to work here today. Father and mighty God, we ask that you would just cast a hedge around this place, that all the distractions would be left outside the door, that we could simply focus on the movement that you would have us to make. Change us, Lord, for today we give ourselves to you anew and afresh, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. May be seated. This week I had a terrible time preparing for the message today. Not because I didn't know what to say, it's because I had too much to say, amen? I had so much in my heart... You just, I just cannot begin to tell you all the things that God has made happen, just like dominoes, back and forth, one by one, that God has opened up and made this day happen. God has evidently moved in power in my life, and I believe in the church life as well, that God is doing something awesome. And I'm going to say right here and right now, before we even begin, Thank you to all those who prayed. And I want to say thank you to my brother, my, my sister, my family, my whole family, my wife and the whole nine yards. My whole family taking up the third row over here. Amen. Amen. I think they heard something about food. That's the only reason they showed up today. But I want to thank my family for praying for me. They have never let me down. It's good to have a Christian family. Amen. But here, I, when I, man, I'm so excited to tell you about this. I have been waiting for almost 20 years to preach this message. I've read this passage of Scripture over and over again, and I've had little inklings of, of the anticipation of what Elijah was professing that was coming to pass, that reign, that reign of blessing, that reign of God's power, that reign of God's presence in a new and powerful way. I've been waiting for almost 20 years of ministry to preach this message, and God told me, this is the verse. And when he said so, I thought I was going to just jump out of my chair and start rejoicing. Because I truly believe what God is saying to us today, that there is a rain cloud, a shower, an abundance of rain, of blessing headed straight for us. I believe it as with all my heart. I'm about to run around the building. I'm, I'm about to cover it up over here. Amen. 
I believe it so strongly. I have never felt this confident in it. I've never felt this strengthened and empowered by God to share a message like this in my entire life. And I see all the evidences that God has made come to pass for this day to happen. Now, believe me, I'm not here to give you a a sweet message to to perk your ears up and tickle them. I'm going to tell you the truth today. But God has got a blessing in mind for this church. Uh, Man, that don't make you chiggers itch. Nothing will. Look, I'm telling you what, God has got a blessing in store. And and can I define it? Say, preacher, can you define what that blessing is going to be? I don't know. But I can tell you, God's got it, and it's going to be great when He's got it. Amen. So I am here today to profess a blessing on the horizon that is going to happen, that will happen to us. It will happen in amongst of us. And by the way, when God is doing work, and I want you to listen to something true, and right here, first and foremost, I'm nothing, absolutely nothing. It is Jesus Christ whom we have come to listen to. Brothers and sisters, when we see the power of God working around us, nobody is able to say, look at what they did. Look what this, so he did over here. All we're going to be able to see is go, look what God did over here. Look what God did over here. And that's what we're fixing to see. God is fixing to do a work in our midst like we've not seen before. Now, I'm not trying to pump you up. I'm telling you the truth that as I believe it is led by the Holy Spirit today. But I'm here to tell you that God is not only telling me that to to share the message that there is an abundance of His blessed reign on the horizon. I, I, I believe He's telling me to share this message with all my heart. But He's got a little caveat in the midst of these things. God has a plan for us. And I have a question for you. What can mess it up? It's not God's going to mess it up. God has a plan to see people saved, see people come to this altar and receive Jesus Christ. Praise God. He's got a plan for marriages to be made solid and more whole than ever before. Praise God. He's got plans to make you solid and whole in your walk with Christ and effective and and filled with joy in your life. And I'm telling you, the only thing that can mess this up is us. Let that sink in for just a minute. God has desired a blessing, a a great showering of His presence, a great anointing, and the only thing that can hinder that in our presence is ourselves. So I want to share today with you what would mess up this picture. Because I've been waiting 20 years to preach this message, amen. I've been waiting 20 years to see the future coming so bright and so strong as I see it today. What can mess it up? The first thing that's going to be a problem if we don't unite in prayer. We have got to be sincere in our prayers. We have to be totally sincere. In our... Now, brothers and sisters, I'm not talking about the prayer where we gather around the dinner table and say, Lord, bless the food, it's time to eat. Amen. We Baptists, we like to eat. We say those quick prayers around the lunchtime. Amen. I'm not talking about that kind of prayer. I'm talking about some serious prayer time. Now you say, Brother Dale, that's just way too simple. No, it's not. Have we not remembered what the scripture said, that the prayers of of a righteous person availeth much? I'm telling you, if we unite in prayer, if we anoint this in prayer, we will release the power of God amongst us. How many times have we read the scriptures over and over and over again where Jesus tells us in in the passages of scripture over and over that we have not simply because we ask not? Christians, brothers and sisters, let me tell you a blessing here is that if we ask, God will respond. But this is not those casual prayers. I'm not talking about that. Look in the scriptures with me. Look what it says in verse 42. It says, so Ahab went up to to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. What I need... I need a commitment from you to pray like you've never prayed before. If you haven't noticed that we're living in a time of, that we need the power of God to move. 
I'm telling you, the evil one has shown his ugly face in our community and in this part of the world. And I'm here to tell you that God's wanting to let his face shine even brighter. Amen? But we are the light that shines for him. We are the ones who who reflect the glory of God. We are the ones who share that light. And we've got to be united in prayer. Notice what happened here. When it was time when the blessing was anointed that was going to be happening, what what did Elijah do? Did Elijah go down at the bottom of the hill and start eating? No, Elijah got serious and he went up to the top of the mountain and he got away from everything and he started praying. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, there was a prayer conference that happened not too long ago. It was a few years back. This is a national prayer conference where people gathered from all over the United States, Christians gathered for the singular purpose to talk about prayer. And while they were there, they had a little poll They had a little poll that they passed around, a questionnaire, asking about prayer in each other's lives. They said, as a result of this poll, that said those people that were were questioned at this meeting, they said, how much time do you spend in solitude in praying in your prayer closet every day? Now, granted, this was a conference that was designed to, to address prayer. And it was, a, it was gathered here unto by people who were burdened by prayer. And when they asked this question, you know what the time frame was? Three minutes a day. Brothers and sisters, we will not see people saved unless we are on our faces before God. Amen. We will not see the power of God poured out like we're talking about here unless God's people unite in prayer seeking, beseeching the holy power of Jesus Christ to shower down upon us. Now, I want you to change your perspectives in prayer. By the way, Brother Mark, at that same conference, they asked ministers. They said, how much time do you spend in your prayer closets? Five minutes. Folks, we're way too busy. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. We've got to pray. I want you to know that I'm going to be praying for you every day, and I need to know that you're praying for me. By the way, if your preacher has lousy sermons, you're to blame because you had not been praying hard enough for him. Amen? <laughs> We've got to be constantly praying for this church, constantly praying that God empowers us, gives us vision, gives us a purpose, because it's all about Him. It's about seeking Him with all of our heart. As the Scripture says in Psalm 119, it says, I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it said, I will that therefore that men will pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. Amen. And the Scriptures over and over talks about how we're supposed to be praying in all situations, praying in everything. The first thing that's going to hinder us from this blessing is if we just throw our prayer life in the back burner. By the way, it's not just the preacher's job to pray. It's just not the deacon's job to pray. It's your job to pray. If you are a member of this house, this godly house, you have a responsibility to be in prayer for your brothers and sisters. Look to the person next to you or closest to you. I want you to go ahead head. It's okay to turn around and look. I won't talk about you behind your back. The person you just looked at, I want you to dedicate yourself to praying today for them. Amen? We are a family now. We are solid. We are one. There's no division. There's no anything in there. We're praying for each other. And by the way, prayer is not just communion. It is the power of God released amongst us. Amen. Amen. Not only that, look at verse 43. Don't look at verse 43. It says, and Elijah said, he said to his servant, go up now towards the sea. And he went up and looked and there was nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Let me just prophesy a little bit in front of y'all. I'm going to tell you the tool that the devil's going to use try to knock this church down it's a lack of unity the evil one laughs at churches all day long 
In my ministry prior to coming here, I'm here to tell you that there I've, I've ministered to many churches that have been in dire situations, kind of like a simple calm voice in the midst of a storm. I've seen churches split over the color of carpet. I've seen churches get division because they don't like the color of the brick. I've seen people do all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm telling you, the devil is laughing his socks off at you. We are one. There is one baptism, one heart, one faith, one Lord Jesus Christ, and we are bonded together through the blood of Jesus. We have got to say right here, right now, that we are one church and we will follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you want to know what, you want to know what the, the evil one fears? He fears a unified church. You want to know the fastest growing church I've ever met in my life? The one that had the most people saved, the fastest growth rate, the, 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 everything was, I mean, just amazing. You want to know the fastest growing church I've ever met in my life? It's one that didn't have a pastor. That says a lot for your preacher, huh? Amen. It's because the church was unified in purpose and vision. When you look at the cross and you focus only on the cross, that's all that you can see, amen? I'm telling you, what we've got to do is we've got to remember that the evil one is looking to divide. He's always looking to divide, but we are the watchmen. We are not just the watchmen for in here, for in the world. It says in Isaiah 52, Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice, and the voice together shall they sing. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that God has bound us together. When I heard some things about what was happening before I came over here, I heard the church bound together in prayer for almost a 24-hour straight period. Amen. You don't know, I literally broke down in, in tears. Enjoy. Then I heard about the vote that happened over here. Amen. Praise God. That was God working. That wasn't Brother Dale. See, God is showing us that when we're united, we can do anything. And I want you to know here, right here and right now, that I've got your back and I need you to have mine. Because when we start letting those things that divide get in between us, there is not going to be any way we can stand together. The next thing, next point on here, look, look, we've got, look at the scriptures again. Verse 44, it says, And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, at, at, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, and say to Ahab, Ahab, excuse me, prepare thy chariot. Seven times, seven times, we have to understand that we've got to be dedicated each of us be dedicated. Now, I'm not trying to give you a pep talk or some kind of uh, sermon that you're going to sit back and go, okay, well, I've heard these things before. I'm telling you, we've got to be individually dedicated to the Lord. It's not up to the next guy. It's up to you. Don't look across to someone else and say, they need to step up further. You need to step up further too. It's all about every one of us becoming more and more of what Jesus wants us to be. We have to be faithful to the charge that God has given to us. We are not perfect, but we can allow the perfect one to operate through us. We've got, to, we've got to be dedicated. We've got to be dedicated to the truth of the word of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm telling you, the world out there, if you haven't figured it out, the devil has taken a tiny ball of truth, tiny little word of truth, and wrapped it in a big ball of lies, and he's trying to pass it all off. Go back to the temptations. Back to the temptation of the Garden of Eden. What did he do? He said, God didn't say that. Even when he tempted Jesus, he started twisting the word of God and Jesus had to respond in truth by the word of God. We have got to stay true to the word. We've got to be dedicated to the word of God, dedicated to the calling that God has given to us, dedicated to the service that we've got that before us. And one of the most important things that we've got to do, we have got to be dedicated to letting the lordship of Jesus Christ being Lord. By the way, you want to know the distance between heaven and hell? It's from here to here. There's a lot of people who can be in this room right now, maybe in your life. You said, I, I, I know who Jesus is. I've heard the word preached over and over again. I've heard about the cross. I've heard about hell. I've heard about heaven. 
But if you've never let Jesus be your Lord and Master, you are not saved. I don't care how many times you've been in church, unless you have repented of your sins and come on your barrow knees to before the cross of Jesus Christ and let Him wash you in the blood, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. To be a church, to be a recipient of this blessing, we have to let Jesus be Lord. Amen. We have to let Him be Lord number one of our hearts. And I'm telling you, not some kind of... Like uh, some kind of warm, fuzzy thing. That means we face sin in our lives and we call sin, sin. And we say, Lord, I repent of it. The scripture says, godly sorrow precedeth repentance. We've got to be sorry for sin again. Amen. We've got to be able to be free to say that there is a hell. And that homosexuality is wrong. Or, or sin is exactly what it's called in the Bible. Amen. We cannot be shy anymore. We've got to say that Jesus is Lord and He is Lord of everything. If Jesus isn't Lord of every part of your life, He is not your Lord and King. For the blessing to fall upon us, we have to simply let Him be the designer of it all. Jesus is Lord for a reason. Amen. He is the King. And it is His plan for which we are achieving. See, even before, even before Elijah even saw the cloud, even before he saw the cloud come up as the size of a man's hand, even before the clouds became black, even before he heard the words of God's leading to faith and things that were going to happen, he understood there's a promise of God's future, but it was only through the blood, only through the blood. I'm here to tell you that there is no other pathway that we can have in this place but in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that means we got to have faith. Here you got some old preacher standing up in front of you telling you about a great day coming, but you got to have faith. Nothing is achieved for God without faith. Nothing is achieved for God without faith. God is going to ask you to make a faith move somewhere. And He's going to make, ask you to make a faith move so strong. And He's going to make it in a way that's going to be out of your comfort zone. But I'm going to here to tell you that you're going to grow. God's going to be glorified. People will be saved. And your lives will be changed. I'm telling you, if we make the faith statement. And I'm going to tell you what. What does the Bible say right here in the Scriptures? It says, it's said to go, go up to Ahab. He said, go up and say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot. Get it ready for the rain's coming. That's my word for you today. Get your chariot ready because the rain's coming. Get it ready. Now, how do you get ready? How do you get ready for the rain to come? First of all, that means you get your heart and right life right with Jesus Christ. That means you come before the altar of God and say, Lord, it's time I let you be the Lord of everything in my life. It's time I let you be the, the Lord that has even on my finances, even in my marriage, even in my workplace. Christians, one of the reasons we have no success in our life is because we haven't let Lord be the king of all of our lives. It's called the hole in the bottom of the boat syndrome. You know what that is? If you're in the middle of the ocean and you've got two things broken on a boat, you've got a broken window on the top side or you've got a hole in the bottom of the boat, which one are you going to fix first? See, God knows that He's wanting to make you and shape you, but He's got a priority list on you. He's got something that's greater to work on, and it's your relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, one, you don't know what happiness and joy is all about. You have no clue whatsoever what contentment and peace is all about. You don't have a clue. You may have some ideas what the world may tell you, but you don't have a clue when, oh my goodness, when Jesus moves in your heart, when God moves in power in your life. I'm going to tell you what, I've got something in my little pocket right here. I've kept it for a while now. I, you'll ask me, and I'll always have this in my pocket. It's my little black rock. I have it in my pocket to remind me of something solid. See, God moved in my heart. He took my black stony heart away. And I, every time I hold this in my hand, it reminds me that this rock has been replaced by another rock. I've been changed by the rock, Jesus Christ. And not only that, one day I have a new name written on a, on a white stone, amen? That's what the scripture says. 
I want you to understand God has got a plan, but we have to get on his page before we can do anything. That means receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We've got to get our chariots ready. What is hindering your chariot? What's hindering your chariot today? If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your, as your Lord and Savior today, I pray that today is the day of change, for change is upon us. A new day is upon us. A new hope is upon us. We've had a great foundation, a great building up, and as the Scripture says, we build on no other foundation than Jesus Christ. Amen. We're here today because God has a promise waiting for us all. What can hinder that promise? If you'll remember back in the Old Testament, God sent the children of Israel out to do combat and said, don't take any of the treasures of this old world. But there was one person who did. And the whole army was defeated because of that one person. I'm not going to be the person to let you down. Oh, I may fail, and I will fail. I promise you, I'm, I'm human. I, I proved every day that Jesus Christ is the only perfect one in this world. But I will work as hard as I can to show you Jesus Christ, and I pray that you do the same thing. Because you are no greater than I, and vice versa. We're both servants of the same mighty God, because I know He can save. I know it personally. Just sitting in this room today, my brother helped to lead me to the Lord. My dad and mom said the prayer over me. I know prayer works. And I know from experience that God can change your heart. If you'll give Jesus a chance. So I want you to prepare to see the incredible. Not looking for, uh, I'm, like, I'm like the Apostle Paul. Don't look for grandiose speeches or, or great things in the flesh. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Spirit's going to do something awesome. And I'm ready. How about you? So here's our time. We have a choice to make today. What you going to do? Are you going to sit there and just going to like, let life kind of just ooze on out, be like it always been? Or are you going to make a move? Are you going to make, make that faith statement? Are you going to get on your knees before God? Are you going to pray? Are you going to believe in Jesus with all your heart? I have been praying for this many years to praise God like this. I don't know what he's going to do, but I, like I told him, <laughs> my brother there the other day, it's kind of like hanging on to a cow's tail. You just touch ground every so often, amen? I'm going to give him glory. I'm going to give him honor. I'm going to give him praise because he's going to do something. And I pray that he's doing something in your heart right now. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. I ask you to, our musicians to come forward if we would. We're going to have a chance where you can embrace your Savior, Jesus Christ. Now please understand this. This moment that we have here is about a change. It's a change where you can say, God, I want more of you. Lord, I need a new direction in my life. Lord, I've got a problem that needs solving. This is the save in place. This is where you can have that done. Today is the day that God has given to us to, to mount a new direction, a new, a new purpose, building upon those things that we have been through. And I challenge you to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior because all these blessings are only available to the children of God.